How's it going? My name is Mitchell Wilson, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, I have a burning passion for learning more about ERDs, and I need someone to make a video explaining them to me. I got you. So that's what we're going to talk about today. ERDs. What do they tell? What are they for? Why do we make them? It's good stuff. So what's an ERD? It's basically just a visual representation of how a database is structured. So it takes an information system's components and shows how they relate to one another. Um, an ERD has three elements. Uh, it's got entities, attributes, and relationships. Uh, the entities are what you're tracking. The attributes are the details about those entities that you're keeping track of. And the relationships are how those entities relate. It's as simple as that. Um, it, it really is pretty simple. Uh, so what's the point? Uh, why do we make them? Uh, we make ERDs for the same reason that a builder creates blueprints before building a house. It provides a framework for what you're building ahead of time and allows you to conceptualize the project from the top down before you even get started. Um, you know, like, okay, I need a database. For what? What are you tracking? How are those things related? Uh, it's a lot easier to create these relationships ahead of time and because you're thinking about it you know what you need and the DBA, the DBMS doesn't um, so it, it allows you to do it ahead of time and it's a lot easier that way than to try to do it inside whatever DBMS you're using basically the 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 ERD is a it's like a bridge between reality and the DBMS it's like it's how you go between um, another reason we create ERDs is it's to communicate the essential structure of your database to people who were not involved in the creation of that database. You know, just like with uh, the blueprints of the house, you didn't have to. You don't have to build the house to know how it's built. If you have the blueprints, if you want to add a wall, if you need to know what goes where, what you can do, what you can't do, where the wires are, you check the blueprints. It's the same thing. Uh, with an ERD, you know, let's say you get a, um, let's say you get that shiny new job as a database administrator, and you know you sit down it's your first day, you get to meet your new your new baby. It's really complicated, and uh, how complicated? How big is it? What's in it? What does it track? What are you about to do? Uh, the ERD is going to be a good place to start. It tells you what all your tables are, what's in those tables, what the relationships between those tables are, what your primary keys are, uh, what your foreign keys are, where they go, what's being tracked. So without even opening the database at all, you're going to have a clear understanding of how complex it is, what it's used to track, and what you can do with it. Another thing that's helped me uh, in, the, in, in these classes, ERDs, writing queries can be hard, like really hard, at least it was in Dr. Morris's brutal take-home tests. And having an ERD to refer to is really helpful. Like he'll, you know, you have to write these complicated queries for these crazy scenarios and you need one piece of information from this table and one piece of information from this table and one piece of information from this table. So you have to join all these tables together but what what tables do you need to join for this crazy complicated query that you've got to write you check the ERD you look at the ERD and oh here's here's everything that I need to know I need this I need this I need this and so now you know what all the entities are where they where they are in their relationships and what joins them together and now and now you can it makes it a lot easier to write your queries um so let's see this is a super basic uh, ERD 
Um, you know, like your school tracks what students it has, what courses are offered, what students are taking what courses, what teachers teach those courses, and so on. And this is just a very basic ERD between students and courses. You know, a student can take many courses, and a course can have many students, obviously. Um, this is a many-to-many -many relationship. You can see the diagram here it has all three elements. Uh, it's got entities, which are student and course. Um, it has attributes are e for each entity. I've just listed, you know, the ID and name, you know, but it'll have a lot of things like contact info, credit hours taken, prereqs for the course, whatever. Um, and then the relationship between the two entities, as defined by the line connecting them, uh, with the uh, the many-to-many -many notation, the crow's foot there. Now in the DBMS, uh, you can't have a many-to-many -many relationship, so for this particular example, um, you will need to create a bridge entity like this, and I named the bridge entity schedule, um, you know, that's just a simple one, the bridge takes the many of both, and then the original entities take the one of the, uh, of the original, so now instead of having a single many-to-many, -many, you have two one-to-many, and um, that's what you have to have for the DBMS. So the primary keys of the original, the student and the course, become foreign keys in the new bridge entity schedule, and together those two form the composite that is the primary key. So the student ID, course ID combination becomes the primary key for that uh, particular entity. And that's the, that's the standard way to do it. You don't have to do it that way. You can make up you know, um, a surrogate, that's what it's called, I couldn't think of it, a surrogate key, you can just make something up like schedule ID, um, whatever, just as long as the student ID and the course ID are both in there as foreign keys, because uh, the key of the one goes into the many, the key of the one goes into the many, you'll hear that a lot, um, but that's how you, uh, that's how you make a bridge, um, and that's, that's basically it, it's just a, it's just an overview, visual representation of the structure of your database for you to look at and know right away what you've got um, and that's all I've got because that's basically all there is so get familiar with these things uh, they'll help you a lot when you have to write those queries good luck